All right. Welcome, welcome. So uh, thank you all for being here today. We're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, learning segment for the day and empowering you all with education uh, that will help you become uh, the home buyer or home investor uh, of your of your dreams and meet your goals. So uh, I'm Jacqueline Kelly. I'm the broker and owner at Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Destination, a, a real estate sales company located in South Florida. And of Star Properties Destinations, we specialize in vacation rentals and property management in the Florida Keys. So uh, we are uh, kind of an all-encompassing type of group and can help you with all of your home buying or home selling needs. So uh, just a quick little overview of today's webinar. Uh, I will give a quick little introduction. We have a wonderful panel panelists here for you today. Our panel members are all real estate agents and uh, industry experts here at Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Destinations. And today we wanted to empower you with the education of the home buying process. Uh, we know that the process, there's a lot of things going on in the real estate process and many of you have a lot of questions about it. How does it what do I expect? Where do I get started? What do I do? What happens? Uh, there's so many moving puzzle pieces in the real estate transaction. So today we're just going to give you a quick overview of what to expect when you're buying a home. And this is uh, webinar one in a series of five. Um, so to give you that schedule here, um, we will have our next uh, webinar will be held on January 31st. 2024, and that is going to be all things real estate financing. So that is always a really interesting topic. A lot of you have a lot of questions about that, how to even get financed. Uh, without financing, usually this can't even happen. So a super important one, uh, February 7th at 4 p.m. will be on real estate investing. So if you're interested in short-term rentals, long-term rentals, commercial properties, we're going to talk about all of it. Uh, February 21st. So we skipped a week there for Valentine's Day. Um, so February 21st, we're going to discuss the home inspection in the title phase. A lot of you have questions about that and um, how, what to expect during the home inspection and what are your options should something happen. So we're going to get dive in deeper detail there. And on March 6th at 4 p.m., it's insurance, which is also a huge topic. So uh, so today we're going to go over all of those things in um, just as a quick overview. Please join us again on those dates and um, uh, and learn, you know, in, in greater detail everything you can expect there. So uh, let's take a look. Um, you know also that we are located in South Florida, in the Florida Keys, in Miami-Dade counties. So this information. Uh, might differ a little bit if you're in a little uh, in a different location, but the process is generally the same, but there might be some differences uh, for your geography. Your real estate agent is going to help you through all of this. So take all of this as kind of an overview, but there, know that there'll be some differences depending on your location. Um, please enter any questions in the chat as we go. Uh, we'll be happy to address those at the end. And your dedicated real estate agent who provided this link to you today um, will be following up with you afterwards to make sure that all your questions were answered and help you through the home buying process. So super exciting to help you get on your way. All righty. Without further ado, I'm going to give you a quick uh, introduction to each of the panel members, and then we will get started with our with our first topic. Uh, so we'll have uh, Ocean Hamilton will be kicking it off, um, talking about working with an agent and how that benefits you. And then we have Karen Williams de Castro talking about financing, Jana Pratt on appraisals. And then we move on to, wait a minute here, then we move on to Samantha RC with the title phase and Ada Rodriguez with insurance and Aaron Keel with inspection. So without and discuss working with an agent and what to expect there. Thank you, Jacqueline. And I want to say thank you to everybody for being here. Um, I know our time is our most precious commodity and you could be spending it 
doing a lot of other things, but you're here and you're choosing to gain the knowledge and insight that you need to be the most informed buyer out there. And so I commend you for that choice. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about the value of using a real estate agent. And so I want you to imagine yourself kind of scrolling through an endless online listing of homes and feeling super overwhelmed by the options. It's really like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So that's why we suggest that your very first step in your home buying process is to find an agent that you work well with. So when you're considering an agent, there's a lot of factors that you're gonna to wanna to consider. Communication style, availability, local knowledge and work style really should be at the top of those things. Um, and you should really take the time to interview your agent to make sure that you work all together and you're making the right choice. Um, after all, this person is going to be uh, your complete guide through the biggest purchase of your life. So it is an important choice. Did we just lose her? Oh, she's coming back in. Oh, technology. Oh, sorry. I'm back. <laughs> Am I back? Okay. You're back. So You're back. Okay. Um, it was just for a second though. So see, real estate agents solving solving challenges as we go. <laughs> um, so anyways, once you found an agent that you're comfortable with, um the next step is gonna be the buyer broker agreement. And so the buyer broker agreement is uh basically a roadmap of your real estate journey, and it's going to formalize the relationship between you and your realtor, outlining expectations, responsibilities, and most importantly, loyalty. Um, by signing this agreement, you're essentially saying, hey, realtor, I choose you to be my advocate my and my guide in this home buying process. So now why is this important? Well, for starters, it sets the term for the partnership. Your realtor, your realtor is committed to uh, working diligently on your behalf, ensuring your best interests are at the forefront of every decision. With the buyer broker agreement, you gain exclusivity and your realtor is dedicated to you and your home search. It's a one-on-one -on -one commitment, giving you the personalized service that you deserve. And beyond that, it's gonna provide clarity on compensation. This way you're gonna get to know how your realtor is being compensated and you're gonna avoid any surprises down the road. So now you may be asking yourself, why is the first step in the home buying process finding a realtor? And um, so I want to take a minute to just briefly uh, discuss the work that a realtor does on their client's behalf. So a realtor is your personal guide and is your expert in the real estate market. They're not just selling homes, they're selling their knowledge and they're selling their expertise. They know the neighborhoods like the back of their hands and they can help you find a perfect match for your needs and your budget. So this goes far beyond finding listings on the MLS. A realtor is going to get to know you. They're going to ask you the right questions, and they're going to find out your needs to make sure that you're not wasting your time on properties that really just aren't going to work for you. So a quick example of this. Let's say you want a waterfront home because you want a place where you can dock your boat behind the house. It sounds super simple and like anyone can find it. But there are so many other factors to consider. How large is your boat? What is the minimum uh, water depth that it's required? What size dock are you going to need? Do you like to boat it on the ocean side or on the bay side? Where's the closest cut through uh, to get from the Florida Bay to the Atlantic Ocean? And I can keep going, but I think you get my point. We're experts in the neighborhoods. We're experts in the properties, in the schools, the parks, the waterways, the farms, the roads. We are experts in the entire areas that we serve. So um, there's also a lot of opportunities uh, for off-market listings. And an off-market listing is a home that hasn't been listed on the MLS. And because we're realtors and we've spent time facilitating relationships with other agents, um, we have a large network uh, of agents and, and we can possibly know about a home that hasn't been listed on the MLS, which is a, a bonus for you as the buyer. Um, next up is negotiation skills. And so negotiation skills are key in the home buying process. Um, and realtors are pros at this and we really love to negotiate. Uh, they'll work tirelessly to get you the best deal possible. So whether it's negotiating the price, the contingencies, repairs, 
honestly, um, our, our goal is just to save you money and to save you headaches. And everything is negotiable. It's a topic that I could spend a lot more time on, but just take my word for it. We love to negotiate and everything is negotiable. So now I'm gonna discuss uh, just really briefly the contracts and the paperwork. And honestly, this is enough to make anyone's head spin, um, but fear not. When you have a realtor by your side, we're well-versed in the fine print. And we're gonna walk you through each document, ensuring that you understand what you're signing and we're gonna make sure that we're protecting your interests. So there's a lot of financial and legal implications that these contracts hold and having a realtor on your side is gonna help keep your money safe. Um, a realtor is also gonna be your, uh, is going to coordinate the entire transaction. And what I mean by this is, um, as my fellow agents are gonna discuss here shortly, that there are so many different aspects of a real estate transaction. There's titles, uh, title work, inspections, financing, insurance, assessments, HOAs, and so on. So you can be assured that we're going to be in constant contact with all of these agencies, ensuring a smooth transaction. Well, at least we hope that it's going to be a smooth transaction. But I mean, in all honesty, in um, oftentimes in real estate transactions, challenges are going to arise. But with a realtor working for you and with you, they're gonna face these challenges with their knowledge and their skills, doing everything in their power to get the deal to the closing table and with as little stress for you as possible. And of course, all the time we're staying in contact with those agencies, we're in constant contact with you, letting you know where we're at every step of the way. Another benefit of having a realtor working for you is that um, you have access to a large network of professionals. So chances are, if you need the best, most reliable HVAC service technician, we know the right person for the job and we know that they're going to show up. Um, we have fostered so many relationships with the best of the best in plumbing, electricity, sewers, builders, lawn care, house care, painters. I mean, and, you know, again, the list shows on. Um, but perhaps the most uh, priceless value of a realtor is going to be the peace of mind that they're going to provide you. From start to finish, they're there for you. Um, they're offering support, guidance, expertise, and they're really just doing everything they can to make the home buying journey smoother and less stressful for you. There you have it. Um, that's uh, the value of using a realtor in the home buying process. Uh, they're your navigator in a complex world of real estate. They're your advocate. They're your confidant. Um, if you're considering buying a home, we strongly recommend and encourage you to connect with a trusted realtor. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Great information, Ocean. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, as we've mentioned, you know, we're going to go through the whole process today. We started with working with an agent because that is typically where you start. And the real estate transaction typically seems just like a daunting, overwhelming task if you've not done it before. Even if you have done it before, we've done it, you know, hundreds of times. And sometimes it's still a little daunting because there's a lot, there's so many things happening. So we started with that piece because we want you to know that's where you should start is by finding an agent that you're comfortable with, you have a good relationship with, a good communication um, you know, uh, a joint communication effort that you guys get along there on the same on the same page. Uh, there's a lot of different things that will pop up during a real, real estate transaction. Every single transaction is different. I will tell you right now, you're dealing with different a different house every time uh, and a different group of pe people. And as Ocean mentioned, there's a lot of different vendors and collaborators that go into this whole process. So start with an agent and it's going to make the process so much smoother. We're going to walk you through all of this and make sure that everything gets done in, in a timely manner. So that's why we started with that piece. One of the next biggest pieces of the real estate purchasing puzzle is going to be financing. So really important to have all your ducks in a row and starting with a good agent and a good lender is going to make this a really smooth process for you. So I'm going to turn it over now to Karen Williams DeCastro and she is going to discuss financing with you. 
So my name is Karen. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm local. I've been a realtor since January of 2015. And the part that freaks most people out is the financing. They can find a realtor by talking to a couple and finding the one that they're the most comfortable with. But financing always gives, it just freaks people out. So as Ocean just uh, demonstrated very beautifully, by the way, um, the role of an agent. She was basically letting you know that as an agent, we represent you and guide you through the entire process. And a part of that is making sure that one, we do everything in our power to get you a property that you can actually purchase. Um, we want to make sure that the property checks off your needs and some of your wants if we can't get them all. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the financing to purchase that property, it's a waste of time. And so the one way that we add value to you is helping you navigate that financing portion of purchasing a home. And so the questions that people ask is, first of all, why do I need financing and why is it so important? So you need financing because financing is the means that you have to purchase a home. Um, if you're not paying cash, then you need to have someone that can provide those funds for you. And the reason why it's important to do before you purchase is because you want to make sure that we're showing you houses that you can actually get. It doesn't do us any good to show you all these properties that are fifty, dollars $100,000 over what you are willing to spend or can spend. And so we do that in order to prevent wasting your time and ours, um, because again, just again, as Ocean said, your time is very valuable. And so we want to make sure that we preserve that. And so the question you would say, okay, great. So I need a, a lender, but how do I find one? What do I do? So this is one of the ways that your real estate agent helps you and works with the lender with you. And this is so that we can help you navigate those spaces. Um, if you already have a good relationship with your bank, or even if you don't, your realtor is going to be able to help you figure out who has the right programs for you, who can give you the things that you need. And the first step into doing that is you found your agent. You want to have a buyer's consultation with that agent. In that buyer's consultation, your agent's going to ask you questions that's going to determine exactly what you're looking for. Uh, it may determine if you have another property that you need to sell or things like that. And that's going to help them guide you to a proper lender for what you need. Um, we'll ask you questions about your lifestyle choices, too. Maybe you are someone that just absolutely has to be on the water, um, but you don't know what your budget is. So maybe once we've talked to the lender, we can then determine what that budget is and then what works for you. Do you need a single family home? Do you need a condo? Which programs uh, are there for those particular type of properties? And so um, once you talk to your lender, again, I want to reiterate, you're going to talk to your lender before you see a property. Um, and there's many reasons for this, but the main reason, again, is to prevent wasting time and showing properties that um, you may or may not qualify for, but also because when you talk to your lender, they're going to tell you all the different types of options that you have. You may determine that you're able to afford a lot more than you think you can. And also when your realtor and you talk to your lender, you're going to get that pre-qualification from that lender, and that's going to make your offer stronger. Again, the whole purpose for us to show you the houses you want is so that you can get it. And one of the ways that we do that is to make sure that your offer is strong and that you have financing for it. So then your question becomes, okay, great. So what, what does a lender do, and how do I prepare to work with this lender? So the lender is going to require certain paperwork for, from you. It will vary depending on what type of program you and the lender decide that you would like to use. But generally, as a rule, you'll need uh, tax returns for probably the last two years, um, paycheck stubs, and they'll ask you for other documentation. Your lender is going to try and determine what your debt to income is, how many bills do you pay, as opposed to how much income you bring in. 
And we'll go further into that when we go into our financing webinar, which is going to be on January the 31st. And at that time, we will talk with a lender um, and get their feedback on that. Throughout the process, your lender is going to stay in communication with you, but also with your agent so that we can everybody can be on the same page. Everyone know what's going on. Once you've found the property and you've gotten under contract, then your lender is going to order an appraisal. An appraisal is super important, but I'm going to introduce Jana, who's going to come in and tell us a little bit about appraisals, and then I'll come right back. Jana, you're on mute. Unmute. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name's Jana, and I'm a real realtor here at Better Homes and Gardens Destination, located in Key Largo, Florida. I would like to just give you a, a small caption of what an appraisal is and what it is used for. Well, first, I want to start by telling you it's an unbiased, unbiased determination of fair market value of a home done by a professional. It's not the same as an inspection. An appraisal deals with the financial value as to where the home inspection deals with the function of the home. Just for example, that being like your HVAC, your plumbing, your electrical, and so on. What the appraiser inspects is the property, which consists of an exterior and interior conditions. They also inspect the lot size, any home improvements, and any existing renovations or additions. With this information, they then begin their report by comparing them to available comparables or similar properties sold in the area within the last three to six months. Um, the appraiser then adjusts the value based on comparable conditions to determine a fair market value. There are a few reasons why appraisals are important. Most important is that it protects your investment by ensuring you as a buyer do not pay more than the home is worth. So appraisals are a main tool for banks when it comes to securing a loan um, as they only offer loans up to fair value of a home. Uh, the buyer is responsible for payment and the banker or lender will order appraisals through a professional third party. Uh, so let's say an appraisal comes back lower than the purchase price. They may only give the appraised value. What are your options then? Well, one, maybe you can try renegotiating re the deal. If the renegotiation re did not go in your favor, you could maybe have to pay the difference or you would have to seek additional financing. Um, backing out of the deal is an option if neither of the other options are attainable to you. Uh, I would like to add that it is crucial to know what you're getting into before it happens. Appraisals are important. Uh, with that being said, Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. See you January 31st, same place, same time, where we will be getting deeper into financing and, of course, appraisals. Have your questions ready. Have a great day. Thank you, Jana. So as Jana was saying, the appraisal is very important, and your lender orders that. And like she said, there's always options. So you have to have the appraisal that has to happen. That's going to determine how much the bank is going to lend you. It's also going to let you know that what you're paying for the house, if it's if it's fair market value or what have you. Maybe you got a deal because you worked with a realtor who negotiated really well for you. Um, so there's always options when you do. It's going to help you uh, prevent you from um, overspending on the property as well. Um, the appraisal, what's different now, I've had conversations with buyers in the past, and yes, it used to be that you could just pick your appraiser. That's not the way it works now. As Jenna said, it goes through a third party. They don't generally, they're not able to just pick and choose who the appraiser is. And so the appraiser is always working for you, the buyer, you're paying for their appraisal. That's who the um, appraiser is working for. So you don't have to worry about all those things of the past that may or may not have happened. Um, so those, all of those things are in place for you. And again, we'll discuss appraisals in a little bit, a little bit of a more depth when we meet again um, on January the 31st. And so you've gotten your appraisal, you've gotten the house, and you're happy, right? 
So you're still kind of, you're, you're thinking in your head, oh, that's great. That's exactly what I do. But I'm just, I just don't think I qualify for anything. And maybe that's because you've heard all the, the myths. You got to have 20%. You've got to have an 800 credit score. You got to have this. You got to have that. There are so many different options to getting financing on a property. Um, and that's why it's best for you to talk to a lender. You don't necessarily need 20%. You might need three. You might need three and a half. You might need 10 you don't know until you have the opportunity to talk to someone. And there's so many different programs. You have VA, you have VHA loans, you have, um, I'm sorry, FHA loans, you have VA loans, you have conventional loans. They do construction loans. They even have UDS, um, UD, USDA programs, which would probably work really, really well up in, in Homestead for some of those properties that um, they offer there. Um, they have program, they have DSR programs, they have DPA programs. There are so many options for you to be able to purchase a home. So before you say, oh, I, I just, I can't, I, I will never qualify for anybody. Reach out, talk to a realtor, interview a couple, see who you, who you're the most comfortable with, who you can be the most open with, because open communication and honest communication is 100% key throughout the whole process. So you find that agent, that agent's going to help you find a lender, and then you you will probably be surprised at the house that you can buy or the few little steps you may need to take in order to make that possible. So I want to thank you guys for coming to our webinar today. Um, I'll see you again on January the 31st at four o'clock. We will talk to a lender at that time and bring all of your questions and I'm going to pass it back over to Jackie. Thank you, Karen and Jana. Great information. And yeah, financing is a loaded topic. There's so much to go over there. So I'm really, really excited for the next webinar on the 31st because we're going to go over a lot of those different types of loans and the, you know, the loan products that might be available. Um, and uh yeah. So anyway, I always chalk it up to when you mentioned talking to a lender before you get started, which I think is so important. I always uh, equate it to going to the grocery store and just filling, 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 filling your cart all the way till it's overflowing with everything you want and then check it to see if you have any money in your wallet. Um, so go to the go to the lender first. Uh, you know, your your real estate agent will, of course, be the very first step and they can connect you with a great agent that matches your lifestyle purchase. So um, you might have different income styles at 1099 versus a W-2. There's going to be different options available to you or if it's an investment versus a primary home. So your agent could always help connect you with that right lender or if you have an existing relationship with the bank, certainly check those out because um, it's a, a huge piece of the puzzle. So that one is a, is going to be a big, fun topic. So be sure to join us then. And next up in the process would be we'd start moving on now to the title process and the title phase. So we're going to uh, pass the mic over to Samantha RC, and she's going to talk about that. So here's the mic. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Sorry, which way am I going? <laughs> How's everybody today? Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Sam Arce, and I am also a realtor with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate up here in Key Largo, and also a lifelong resident of the fabulous Florida Keys. And I'm so happy you guys came to join us today. I am here to demystify what title insurance is and... Um, help you understand that it's basically just protecting your property investment. So let's talk about it. What exactly is title insurance? Well, in simple, simple terms, it's a type of insurance that protects you, the homeowner, and your mortgage lender from potential financial loss on your uh, related to your property's title. So since buying a home is one of the biggest investments you're ever going to make, title insurance ensures that that investment is protected. So our title agent that we choose will be with us the whole home buying process. They're going to start off by ordering the survey and elevation certificates, which is really important and especially crucial early in the process, because if the home insurance that you're going to have to pay comes out way too high, you can still back out of the deal or renegotiate, use that realtor's expert negotiation skills to see if they can get you a bit of a better deal. Because if you do hold a mortgage, you will have to hold um, your wind and your flood insurance. So it's very, very good to know what you're getting yourself into. So now there's from the process from start to finish. We're going to start off with a title search. 
The title company conducts a thorough search of public records to trace the history of the property's ownership and assess the status of the title. That means they'll be examining all the deeds, mortgages, tax records, court records, and any other documents to identify potential issues, such as outstanding liens, encumbrances, or claims on the property. So then there's the title examination. After gathering all this information, the company examines the documents to verify the legal ownership of the property. They look for any restrictions or conveyance or easements that affect your property and let you know about them before you get yourself into a situation. After that examination, the title company will facilitate the purchase of your title insurance. And um, the insurance policy is going to be customized based on the property and provides coverage for specific risks related to your title. And let's not forget escrow services. The title company often acts as your escrow agent, holding funds and any important documents until um, all the conditions of the sales are met. And then we go on to the closing process. So the title company plays a central role in the closing process because they coordinate all um, the parties, including the buyer, seller, agents, lenders, to ins ensure a very smooth and um, legal transfer of ownership. They prepare the um, necessary documents and um, facilitate the signing of those documents. And then they're going to record your deed as well. So after closing, they're going to ensure that the new deed and any other relevant documents are properly recorded with the appropriate government office. And this will officially transfer the ownership from the, buy from the seller to the buyer. And they will also handle the distribution of funds per the closing instructions, ensuring that all parties, such as the seller, the agents, the service providers, all receive their payments. Very important. And well, now you understand a little bit better why it's such a crucial part of this process. And it's so important to work not only with a reputable agent that you get along with, but also a reputable title company and choose a policy that suits your specific needs. And as an agent, since we build very strong relationships with our affiliates, we are happy to point you in the right direction to an excellent title agent as well. The benefits of the title insurance really do go way beyond financial protection. It really does provide peace of mind, ensuring that you have a clear and marketable title, which is crucial when it comes time to resell your property. So now that we've covered the basics of this, I will be diving even deeper into it um, during our home inspection and title phase webinar on the 21st of February, 4 p.m. And um so if you have any questions on any of these topics, feel free to please put them in the Q&A session here or come back on the 21st and we'll get really into it. But thanks so much for joining us today in the first of our series on home buying education. And um, just remember that title insurance is a very valuable tool in protecting your investment. And just please feel free to reach out to us anytime if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Thank you, Sam. That was a really great overview of what's actually kind of a complicated and legal part of it. Um, but we always have some, we are very lucky to have some excellent title companies and attorneys here in the Florida Keys. And you can use those interchangeably for a, a basic real estate transaction. I know that some states require you to use an attorney. Here in Florida, you can use a title company as well. They are um, insured by uh, by the title insurance companies. Um, so, yeah, they I mean, they protect you, as you as you said, on a lot of different things from the boundary survey. I've had issues come up with that and uh, liens. And sometimes their owner doesn't even know that a, a lien exists on their home and they can be uncovered during the title process. So. Super important. I mean, can you imagine buying the home, just taking somebody's word for it? Yep, great. They own it. No problems. And signing away. And you know, if you don't have that title process to really confirm that there's no other claims to the property, there's no other liens. We also check things. They, the title company will check for code violations. Uh, they, together with us, uh, usually check the open and expired permits as well. So we're really making sure that you're getting a property that is free and clear of any other of any issues. And the title is officially who owns it. So super important. Um, that is a little. There is a that is probably one of the larger closing costs, I guess, and that goes by um, that's calculated by purchase price. 
And that, as Ocean said, is a negotiable. Everything uh, is negotiable as far as fees go. So, um, but they also protect you with things like if uh, you're purchasing from a foreign national, there could be taxes that are owed when they sell the house that those taxes have to be reported. So they check all of those things. So, you know, um, rest assured that, you know, all of that gets checked during the title phase. And if you're working with a, a good, reputable title company or attorney, all of that gets looked at for you. So yes, more up for that on February 24th at 4 p.m. We're going to have a great guest speaker joining us who's in the title industry. So that's going to be really interesting to hear. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some some pitfalls and some uh, scary stories to share. So that'll be really fun. Um, but all of this is kind of happening simultaneously in the real estate transaction and your real estate agent is kind of uh, making sure all this happens for you. So we get uh, the financing is usually applied for within five days. The escrow deposit is usually submitted within three days. So we'll get the title company on board right away. And next up in the process is the home inspection. So we get that ordered right away as well. And you'll have uh, your due diligence period to start. So I'm going to turn it over next to Erin Keel, and she's going to talk with you about the home inspection. Hello, thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, as Jacqueline said, my name is Erin Keel, and I have been living and working in Florida Keys real estate since 2019. Um, and between my time, I know Jacqueline's and everybody else is here, we have seen some things with inspections. Um, so you've listened to working with your realtor, financing a title. So let's talk about the home inspection. Very critical step in the purchasing process. Um, and firstly, when we're making an offer, like Jacqueline mentioned, this is one of uh, another one of the contingencies that can be negotiated. Um, so if we wanna keep our offer strong, we'll kind of shorten this inspection period. It's also known as a due diligence period. You might've heard that term as well. Um, in Florida, uh, we use, one of our contracts we use is an as is. And during this inspection time, the buyer can back out of that contract for any reason whatsoever and still be able to retain their initial escrow deposit. Um, and so that's that good faith deposit that typically accompanies the offer or is due shortly after acceptance like Jacqueline was talking about. And again, there's different contracts um, for different areas. If you're in a different state, obviously things might differ, uh, nuances from county to county. But in general, that's that's on average kind of how that goes. Um, so it's really important to work with you, you know, your local realtor who does this day in and day out um, in their specific location. Okay, so as soon as we're under contract, uh, I am connecting you with qualified local inspectors and then helping you in scheduling those inspections. Um, inspections can range from really specialized ones like roofing, plumbing, but a really good place to start is the overall home inspection. This report generally um, costs under $1,000, but it's going to depend on the size of the property and just the complexity. Uh, another important thing to note is that this inspection is completely 100% uh, uh, confidential to the buyer. So that is not shared to anyone else unless you choose to do so. Um, <clears throat> an exemplary inspector on that report, they're not going to only... Uh, uh, they're not going to only address items that need to be immediately repaired, but they're going to also, they're going to put everything on that list for you. So it's going to be extremely detailed. You're going to have items that might need to be repaired in the future or just general maintenance requirements. And so I think that's another good thing about working with your realtor. We know those inspectors who are going to be really diligent. The inspection is probably going to be between two to four hours, depending on the size of the property. If you have an inspector that's in and out in an hour, that's a huge red, red flag. Um, but again, uh, your, your local realtor is gonna know who's gonna do the best job for you. Um, a great inspector will have this report emailed back to you within 24 to 48 hours. And this inspection, it might result um, in getting those more specialized inspections, uh, like I mentioned before roofing, plumbing, electrician, we might need to schedule more of those inspections, but you're gonna be armed with this knowledge of what your future costs look like. And then perhaps if we do need to negotiate back with the seller, um, we can do so at that time. 
Typically, when an inspector is doing the home inspection, they're also going to be doing a four-point inspection. So that's going to cover the roof, electric, plumbing, and AC. And if you are a buyer that's going to require insurance, that four-point report, it's, it's a must-have um, to be able to, for the insurance to be able to see the measurable safety features of those four points, they're going to base your insurance off of that. And then they're going to be able to determine your premiums and also if the property might just be too risky for them to insure. Again, that's not the end of a contract. Everything is always negotiable. So we can go back and determine, you know, what, what we can do, how we can mitigate those issues. Um, and then in some instances, insurance will also allow us to remedy those issues that arise um, post closing. So there's always options out there and your professional is going to help guide you through those. Uh, lastly, I want to touch on the termite inspection. So here in South Florida, we do have termites. Um, it's more common maybe than in other parts of the country. And so it's nothing to necessarily be alarmed about, but you should know what your property has, obviously. So a couple hundred dollars, really well worth it. And these inspections are all to protect the, uh, you, the buyer. So it is a time to do your due diligence so you can move forward in your purchase and have a better understanding of your overall future costs. Um, this is likely the biggest, if not one of the biggest purchases of your life. And so a couple hundred thousand dollars on inspections is well worth it. Um, in our future seminar on February 21st, we're going to have a master inspector here. He's going to go over the four point in more detail and then also talk about some tips and tricks, what he looks for and probably mention some like crazy stuff that he's seen. So please come with your questions and we'll do a little Q and A on February 21st. Awesome, great info, Erin, thank you so much. Yeah, the inspection is always a, a really, just a highly anticipated um, part of the transaction. Everybody really looks forward to that and wants to know what they're getting into and it's super, super important. Um, of course, to know what, like you said, what costs you're looking at in the immediate future, what is about to break, and what am I looking at replacing the next six months, one year, three years? How old is the roof? How old is the is the hot water heater? How old is the AC? If you don't know, you know, all of those might be on their last leg the day you purchase. So really important for you to know that up front so that for one, you can either you can decide if this home is going to is right for you or not. And maybe it's not. And on the as is contract, as you mentioned, um, we have that inspection period where if these things are too much for you, you can actually cancel the contract and get a full refund of your deposit during that inspection period. Um, so it really, that alleviates a lot of the concern, I think for buyers, because you can really get, get to know the house first thing. You will also get the insurance inspections during that time and, uh, we'll send off insurance and get insurance quotes for you, um, during the inspection period, because that is also, because the buyer can back out for any reason. It says for their buyer's sole discretion. So one of those things that we look into is insurance and confirming that the insurance is going to be affordable for the buyer. Um, and if it's not, then you can back out, um, and know for that, for the inspection too, um, you might be wondering what's the difference with the seller's disclosure. So here in Florida, sellers are required to disclose any, any material, uh, any defects that would affect the value of the property. So we typically ask for a seller's disclosure statement or form that they'll fill out saying this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Um, but sometimes they might forget about a certain thing or it, they might think that it is readily available for you to see. Um, so the inspection not only uncovers all of the things that they did disclose, but all the things they might not have disclosed um, just by not thinking of it. So uh, in the age of all this mechanical, so super, super inspection are important. It'll cost you between $500 and maybe $1,500, depending on the size of the home and worth its weight in gold, let me tell you. And I'm really looking forward to that webinar as well on February 21st, where we've got to hear from the master inspector going over some of the things that he's uncovered over the years. Uh, it's gonna be really, really uh, eye-opening, I'm sure. So, um, so this is a perfect segue into 
uh, insurance because that's something we do look at during the inspection or due diligence period. So I'm going to turn it over to Ada Rodriguez and she's going to discuss with you insurance. Take it away, Ada. Hi, everybody. This is um, Ada Rodriguez. Um, I'm also an agent with um, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate in Key Largo. Um, I was um, raised in Miami, so I moved down to the Keys a few years ago. And um, so I serve in real estate from Miami to Key West, and I am here to assist you guys. Um, so today we're going to discuss the... Um, Home insurance process, um, um, it's juicy stuff. Let's get some into the juicy stuff. Okay, so home insurance, it could be a little bit overwhelming and a bit scary for some. Um, there's a lot of information involved. Um, so the solution may be to, well, to be well-informed and to have an agent that is going to guide you along the way um, so they could feel more comfortable and with your decisions. There are different types of insurance um, for the home insurance policies available and different types of requirements in South Florida um, that you need to consider. So, and ways and how do you can save for your premium? So let's dive in into the good stuff. What are the types of home insurance policies, policies available? Okay, so we have four main types, the HO3, HO6, wind insurance, and flood insurance. When obtaining a mortgage, let's keep in mind, first of all, that um, if you're with obtaining a mortgage, the lender will require you to have homeowners, flood, and wind insurance, all three. If you're not uh, using a lender and you're paying cash, um, it's not required, but it is a good idea because um, we do live in an area where there's all kinds of um, hurricanes, storms, and flooding going on. If you're purchasing a condo um, for the first time or most of the time, I'm sorry, most of the time flood and wind insurance will be included already in the HOA fee. But if it's not, you would need to um, purchase it separately. And then there will be the um, insurance for the content of the inside of the property. Now let's go over each one, HO3 insurance. This is um, the most common policy for single family homes. It covers the dwelling of the property and, per and personal property. It protects against perils like fire, lightning, theft, things like that. But it may exclude perils like floods or sinkholes. And this is where you would need your additional coverage. Um, HO6 insurance, it's also known as the condo insurance. And it's designed, obviously, for condominium owners. It um, covers property, improvements, and liability. And then we go into the wind insurance. Wind insurance um, is very essential in South Florida because we do have hurricanes and storms all the time and um, it's not typically covered under the standard home insurance, so it must be purchased separately. Um, it covers damage caused by wind, rain, and other storm-related perils. And it depends on the premiums, depend on the type of roof, strappings, and doors and windows that the house has. And then there's property, I'm sorry, flood insurance. Blood insurance is also essential in South Florida due to the fact that, as we all know, most of the areas are prone to flooding and is also not typically covered under the standard home insurance, so it must be purchased separately. Now, when you do get it home in, uh, flood insurance, we um, there are different types of flood zones that affect your premium, so let's go over the three types. The X flood zone is the area that is likely not to flood, so it's easier to get a good, um, decent uh, premium at a good price. And then there's the AE flood zone, which may or may not flood. And this one, you do have to pay a little bit more. And then there's the VE flood zones, which is likely to flood or is below the flood um, level. So definitely uh, will cost a little bit higher. So what are the requirements um, to consider um, when you're getting insurance for in South Florida? As Erin um, already covered a little bit during the home inspection period, um, there is a inspection that is required by the insurance company called the four point inspection. This one gives an insight to the current condition of the house. Um, by evaluating the four major systems, roofing, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC, which is your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Something to point out is that with this inspection, um, the four-point inspection, 
the homeowners could use it to um, determine the condition of the property and therefore make a decision, you know, to decide whether they do want to go on or forward with the investment, you know, whether it's a good idea or not. In the same way, um, for flood insurance, the elevation certificate is required. This is the EC and the closing agent will order one of these um, and send it to the insurance agent. And by the way, sometimes sellers already have one. So it's a good idea or it's a good way to save money because then the buyer can save and not having to order one. Then we have wind mitigation report and this um, is required for the wind insurance. This is a seven question Florida standard um, report, I'm sorry, form. And it's designed to give homeowners insurance discounts on homes that meet certain criteria like building codes. Okay, so this could be a lot and it could be a little bit confusing, overwhelming for all of us, you know, when the first time you go over it, but that's why you have me, your realtor. Your realtor will help you with the insurance um, agent, gather all the information so you're not alone here. We're gonna work, um, help you out every step of the way. We worked as a team, truly, as all the other agents um, mentioned. Um, we could uh, also assist in sending the elevation certificate to several brokers, and that way you can shop around and compare premiums and get the best deal and save money, which is what everybody wants to do. So these are some of the many reasons why it's a great and very important to hire a professional realtor because we will guide you along the way you know, and with so many steps. Um, and here's how you can save money. Everybody loves to save money um, with the home insurance premiums in South Florida. So there are desirable features that some homes have like impact windows, hurricane shutters, specific roof strappings, and of course, new roofs. All of these can provide credits that lower your premium. And the inspection report will provide this information for you. If the property that you're buying does not have any of these features, we can always go back to the seller and uh, with this information, and this is where I'm going to put my negotiation hat on and fight for you because um, these items can be fixed and may, either the seller may um, go ahead and, and offer to fix or give you some credit. Sometimes insurance companies will allow a time frame for the safety components to be fixed so and upgraded post-closing so that way you still be able to go through your, your loan. Another way to save, uh, which already, I already touched a little bit on, is that if the seller does carry flood insurance, um, the new buyer can assume, it if, if, can assume it if qualified. Okay, so um, remember understanding all, type, all the types of home insurance in South Florida and being aware of the specific requirements can help you make informed decisions. So by implementing all these cost savings, uh, little tips that we discussed, you can enjoy a good comprehensive coverage and keep your premiums in check and, you know, make uh, have a good uh, premium monthly. I hope this was a great overview um, and that you really learn a few things. And now this is only scratching the surface, the surface of the world of insurance when buying a property, but not, don't worry, we have um, your or your agent has your back. Your agent will be there with you the whole time communicating between all parties so that the insurance is ready to buy right at the time of closing and everything will go smoothly. Don't forget um, that March 6th, we're gonna have at 4 p.m. a local insurance agent expert with much more information and he's gonna answer all the informed questions that you may have and um, uh, obviously going deeper into the world of insurance. Thank you so much for being here and I'm glad I was able to help out in any way possible and reach out to us if you should have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. That was well done. Very well said. Uh, insurance is another another loaded topic and a topic all in of itself. And that's why we are having another seminar uh, or webinar March 6th to review insurance. So we're going to have a great uh, insurance agent here to uh, de demystify some of the issues or concerns you might have with insurance and talk to you about how to save on insurance and go over any questions that you might have. Um, and if insurance expense is a concern for you, and we just love to save money, um, a lot of times what we do is uh, we will look for homes that might be uh, more cost effective in insurance. They have strength and safety features that are going to get you discounts on, on your insurance premiums. 
Uh, we know storms are coming here in South Florida. So thankfully our building codes are quite strong. So especially probably every 10 years, our building code gets upgraded and to as storms intensi intensify. So we know what to look for. Our new builds, oh my gosh, they're, are, they're built to withstand like 185 mile an hour winds. Um, flood zones, you're, if the, we've been using flood maps here since 1975. So if the, uh, the, most of our homes are built on stilts here to be above flood, of course the downstairs could flood and sometimes those are turned into apartments um, and that could affect your, your flood rating. So your, your agent you know, can typically at least eyeball it and say this one is gonna have a better insurance premium than that one. Um, we rely on the experts always to give you the quotes for it, but we'll have a good idea. So if insurance costs are a concern for you, Make sure to discuss that with your agent and they can point you in the right direction on if a home is going to have a, a better insurance rate or, or, you know, a higher or a lower one. Um, but as Ada mentioned, a lot of times the insurance companies will give you a little window of time after purchase where you can do the upgrades. Um, and there's actually a lot of times tax credits or incentives to help you do those upgrades and even financing options if you wanted to upgrade your uh, windows to impact windows or you need to put on a new roof when there are improvements like that a lot of times either the uh, the contractor will provide it or there'll be other sort of loans that um, that might be an option for you to get those improvements done and you'll save money on insurance you'll probably save money on utilities uh, and maybe get a tax credit so a lot of times they're worth that upgrade if you can get it done um, but great great information and um, that actually took up the entire hour. So um, if anybody has any questions, I don't see any in the chat, but feel free to add some, th add some there if you have any, and we're glad to review them or get back to you on those another time. So anyway, um, thank you so much for joining us here today. And a very special thank you to all of our panelists. You guys have worked very hard on this and you really are truly professionals and experts in this industry and on your topics. So I really can't thank you enough. I hope that all of you got some great information out of this. And again, just to review our timeline for the next in the series, we have um, financing and appraisal on January 31st, investing on February 7th. That's gonna be a really interesting topic. February 21st is the home inspection in the title phase and March 6th is going to be insurance. So as you got a little bit of an insight today, those are really, really, um, they're all big topics and we're excited to have some other industry experts in here to speak with us. So be sure to bring your questions and we'll go over those and it'll be uh, really fun. So thanks again, you guys. Uh, without further ado, I will go ahead and end this webinar and reach out to us at any time. You can log on to our website at flkeys-realestate.com. You can find us on Google. You can call the office at 305-451-1020 um, or look on our websites and you'll find all of our agents and feel free to contact any one of them directly. We are all here to service you in South Florida for all of your real estate needs. So thank you again. Thank you, panel members. Uh, everybody give a nice goodbye. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.